The Genesis Project. Could we develop ecospheres on other planets? If we were to discover that life is rare in the universe, does mankind have an obligation to seed other worlds with living creatures? If so, Professor Claudius Gross from Goethe University believes he's found a way we could do this via methods which are achievable within the next few decades. He calls this the Genesis Project, as it seeks to kickstart the formation of life on non-inhabited planets far outside our solar system. So let's explore how this project might work as we investigate how the Genesis Project seeks to develop ecospheres on other planets. Number 3. Transient Habitability In recent years, humans have discovered that our planet Earth might not be as unique as we thought. Sure, it's the only world we know of to harbor life, but many signs point to our planet being just one of many habitable bodies out there in the cosmos. Just because we've got liquid water, an atmosphere, and a sweet-ass moon doesn't mean we're all that. Since the very first exoplanets were discovered back in 1992, we have identified a total of 3,500 worlds outside our solar system. But while most of these are frozen popsicle planets, gas giants, and super-hot balls of fiery molten rock, some are considered habitable due to their location in the solar sweet spot known as the Goldilocks Zone. So named after that greedy little lady who ate other people's porridge and judged them on the quality of their mattresses. The problem is, a planet's habitability is by no means permanent. There are other factors aside from its proximity to a star which determine whether a world can harbor life. Many exoplanets inside the Goldilocks zone of their stars are habitable today and will be for a long time. These should all be left alone in case they've already developed life or may do so in the future. However, there are a significant number of exoplanets whose habitability is temporary. The conditions present today are suitable for life to evolve, but it would almost certainly die out before it managed to develop into anything complex. Advanced life would be possible on these worlds if their habitability period was somehow extended. And that's exactly what one not-so-crazy German professor wants us to do. Number 2. Making a Home To make a planet suitable for life, you're going to need the presence of an atmosphere. And it's going to need to hold on to that atmosphere for a period of time known as forever. It's no good flirting with an atmosphere and breaking up after a few weeks of passionate romance. We need a long-term relationship here, and Professor Claudius Gross thinks he knows how to achieve this. Professor Gross works at the Institute of Theoretical Physics at Goethe University, Frankfurt. In an essay published in the journal Astrophysics in Space Science, Gross outlines his method of extending a planet's habitability by seeding it with microorganisms. Gross suggests we could use photosynthetic microbes to form an atmosphere, with these handsome little fellas able to queef out the gases we'd need to create a viable blanket of delicious, heat-trapping, breathable fun clouds. Achieve this, and you've changed the planet forever. The next step is to throw a few more little critters down there and give them a helping hand, because by speeding up the development of life, they stand a better chance of survival. Gross estimated that life on a seeded exoplanet could skip the four billion years Earth took to reach its Precambrian stage and start off from where Earth was 500 million years ago. It's basically like downloading your friend's saved game because you can't be bothered to complete a four billion year tutorial, which kind of makes sense when you think about it. Gross believes we could facilitate this using a gene laboratory capable of synthesizing organisms. This technology would prove crucial on an artificially seeded world, as the differences between an exoplanet candidate and Earth would present biological organisms with a slew of new challenges, none of which are fun or end up with them winning a prize. It's possible we could send a whole bunch of organisms to an exoplanet and see them die off within seconds. So to prevent this, we might modify our colony of microbes and imbue them with the ability to survive on their new world. 
After the initial seeding, further microorganisms would be rained down upon this world to continue the development process. These single-celled chaps would eventually transform into multicellular organisms and, in turn, go on to develop into complex life like goats, hermit crabs, Rosie O'Donnell, and those weird red bugs everyone liked to squish as a kid. This process would take tens or possibly hundreds of millions of years, so I guess we better get started, right? Number 1. When do we start? Based on our modern technological capabilities, Professor Gross believes that a Genesis mission could be sent within as little as a few decades thanks to the imminent development of unmanned micro-spacecraft. Light-sail nanocraft capable of traveling between the stars are almost a reality, with several successful prototype tests having been conducted in the last few months. Regular Strange Mysteries fans will know we're pretty much obsessed with the Breakthrough Starshot initiative, which plans to send nanocraft to Alpha Centauri by the 2060s. These tiny baby spaceships should be capable of traveling at 20% of light speed, or around 60,000 kilometers per second, making relatively short work of the 4.3 light-year gap between us. Their journey time is estimated at 20 to 30 years, and the Starshot mission also plans to include a flyby of the potentially habitable planet Proxima Centauri b. But if we get there and there's not too much to write home about, we could make the best of it and seed this world with microorganisms. If we discover that Proxima Centauri b is dead in 2060, it is entirely possible for us to have brought it to life by the close of the 21st century. This could be achieved by sending standard Earth organisms over to this system, or we could develop the field of synthetic biology to help create organisms more suited to the new world. Synthetic biology is an up-and-coming technology we've covered in a few recent videos. In this scenario, the gene laboratory mentioned earlier could be used to edit the genome of an existing organism, duplicate an organism's genome, and place it into blank cells, or allow the creation of a new organism entirely from scratch, depending on which technique will help our star babies survive in their new home. By 2060, we should have developed both of these technologies to a degree which makes seeding a planet a feasible goal of humanity. We should also have managed to identify a number of transiently habitable exoplanets which are suited to harboring life, enabling us to expand our operation and seed more than one star system. Using artificial intelligence, a fleet of nanocraft would be able to analyze an exoplanet, scan it for signs of life, and determine whether it has the properties we need for our little cosmic gardening project. If so, mankind could be well on its way towards becoming a universal creator. But with the costs of Project Starshot estimated at $10 billion by the time it's finished, many will ask, why should we even bother considering this venture since we'll never live to see the results? This is an important question that we shouldn't dismiss, and we're going to try to answer it in our bonus video why Mankind Must Bring Life to the Cosmos, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's bull****. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is. But perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. 
Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality, visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind-opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question, from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strangemysteries.